O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his mercy endures forever. Welcome, one and all, to Faith Matters with Philip Campbell, a Catholic variety program broadcasting on Good Shepherd Catholic Radio out of Jackson, Michigan. And I am the aforementioned Philip Campbell, your host, your traveling companion, your voice on the other end for the next half hour. And I'm so pleased that you are tuning in to another episode of Faith Matters. Now, at the time of the recording of this program, where we're in the middle of 2020, it is it is the pandemic. Uh, kids are going back to school, and and uh, because of concerns around the pandemic, so many people are are being thrown into uh, into virtual uh, virtual school, virtual learning this year, and it's been a big confusing mess uh, across the board. But even even uh, if we discount the pandemic. As, as time goes on, we're going to see more and more integration of virtual learning in our traditional educational uh, models. And so um, we're going to be talking about that today. We're talking about uh, online education with uh, a friend of mine, Maureen Whitman. She's been on the program before. Maureen is the co-founder of Homeschool Connections, which is a Catholic homeschool curriculum provider. She's also the author of For the Love of Literature and a co-editor and contributing author to the Catholic Homeschool Companion and a Catholic Homeschool Treasury. She's a contributing editor to the Catholic Homeschooling Magazine, Mater et Magistra, and her articles have appeared uh, all over the place. Our Sunday Visitor, Homeschooling Today, The Catholic Home Educator, New Covenant, Latin Mass, Catholic Faith, Catholic Digest, and more. Uh, Maureen and her husband are parents to seven children who have always been homeschooled, and she brings not only her experience but an excitement and love of homeschooling to her work as a writer and speaker. And, uh, and she's also a co-founder of the Catholic Home School Conference, which is a very exciting project I'm sure she'll tell us about. And so uh, welcome back, Maureen. So good to be here. Thank you. You are very, very welcome. Uh, also, just full disclosure, I teach for Homeschool Connections, so uh, in, yep. so Maureen's uh, my boss. Uh, <laughs> but I'm not going to cut her any slack, because on Faith Matters, I am the boss. So That's right. <laughs> I'm ready. All right. All right. <laughs> so, Maureen, uh, it's obviously a, pre- yeah. it's a pretty tricky year for education all around. Just uh, in general, to start us off, what are you hearing out there in the education world about how people are feeling about their options this year? And this, I mean, not just homeschooling, your public school friends, private school, people you know have kids in college. Just what's yeah. the word on the street out there about how people are feeling about their educational options right now? Well, that's a huge question. <laughs> it's crazy out there right now. It's, it's, it's really all over the place. You know, um, I, a lot of our kids from Homeschool Connections who graduated from high school this last year, last May, mm-hmm. including my own son, um, they're not even going to college this year. They're, they're taking a gap year. Yeah. Um, and that's what we're doing, just because of the uncertainty, you know, uh, just not knowing, am I going to be in school? Am I going to get sent home? Let's just take a gap year and spend another year, you know, working or, or, or whatever. Um, my daughter now, who's she's just she's a junior at Franciscan, mm-hmm. and you know, we took her to school in September. And we, you know, teasingly told her, we'll see you in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I figured it was going to get shut down because at that point, Franciscan started a little bit later. Mm-hmm. So we were already seeing some schools that had already moved the first two weeks into um, virtual education. Um, but fortunately for her, it's um, Franciscan's done a really stellar job. And life is continuing pretty close to normal. You know, it's, it's of course, not perfect, but uh, they're still in the classroom. And so that's going really well. Um so it just probably depends on where you're at as far as college goes. Um, yeah. 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 So as far as K-12, again, seeing a number of different trends. Uh, you know, my husband works in charter schools, and they've gone completely online. His two schools have. And um, but other schools are meeting in person. They're doing um, hybrid schools where they're doing part online, part in person. Uh, the big issue in Detroit is, you know, a lot of these kids, if they go completely virtual, even when they're giving a computer, they don't have Internet. Right. So, right. right. You know, or they have two parents who work or they're in a single parent home and mom has to work. So just a lot of uncertainty, a lot of problems there. Um, you know. It, yeah. Now, I, I, I have seen uh, I've been in places where I've seen people. uh 
for example, uh, without going into too much detail, like I've seen people who don't have Wi-Fi at their house and they're going into other locations trying to, to drag their kids and do school in right. some, you know, like in their friend's office or like going to, you know, try, trying to find, they can't go to the library because they're still closed. Um, and it, it's been very, very challenging. It's been chaotic. Yeah. And you see people saying like, well, now I know that, now I know that homeschooling doesn't work because my, you know, this is just a, this is just a clown show. Like, <laughs> you know, this is what, right. and, and people have, and, and homeschoolers have come back and say, no, this pandemic schooling is not the same thing as, as homeschooling. So how right. is, how is what you are seeing uh, this pandemic schooling different from traditional homeschooling? Yeah, so pandemic schooling is not homeschooling. <laughs> right. um, you know, it's funny when, when back in March, right, when we went into total lockdown, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of my friends were like, oh my gosh, you know, this won't be like anything to you. <laughs> well, it was. So, you know, we went to co op twice a week. My son played sports. Uh, you know, it was completely different. And, you know, homeschooling is not just sitting at home 24 7. It's getting out into the community. Homeschooling takes far less time. Um, actual learning takes less time because we're not managing a large classroom, right? Right. So we're out in the community. We're volunteering. We're doing co-op. We're doing sports. We're going to clubs. Um, I always used to say we car school, you know, more than we homeschool. Right. So it was hard on us, too. Pandemic schooling is so different because homeschooling isn't about just sitting in front of a computer and <laughs> soaking in information. Right. Really Let alone actively uh... engaged. <clears throat> Right, let alone imposing it on families who would not have chosen that to begin with. I mean, every family that homeschools has made a deliberate choice to homeschool, but now parents who Correct. probably never imagined they were going to be doing school at home, didn't want to do school at home, would prefer their children in the uh, in the building. Now they're being told, you have to do school at home, and that probably adds another layer of anxiety. Right, and, and there's so much anxiety, too, right now among children, not knowing what's going to happen in the world. So that adds to the complication. We were all thrown into this unexpectedly. And so we weren't prepared for it. Yeah, you're thrown into homeschooling. You had no time to plan. Uh, same for the teachers. Mm -hmm. You know, all of a sudden, all these teachers who are used to classroom teaching are thrown into virtual education. Yeah. And it's a completely different dynamic. It is. It is. And as someone my, myself who has taught in classrooms for over a decade and also taught online for over a decade, the, the mode of engagement and teaching online is entirely different than what you would do in an in-person uh, classroom. And, um, but let me ask you this. Um, yeah. what are, as people are transitioning to online education, and I know, I know in many cases they don't have a choice about the format. Um, the mm -hmm. district is just saying you have to do this. But I guess from the point of view of, uh, of parents who are trying to acclimate to it or teachers who are trying to just do their best, what are some common missteps that people make when they transition to online education? Well, so are you talking about parents who are just, we're going to do what the school is telling us to do, and, and this is the only choice we have? I mean... Yeah, I guess they don't have too much control over, <laughs> I don't have control over it. Right. So, well, typically what we're seeing, and, and it yeah. depends on the school, right? I've seen private schools and school districts do it differently. Yeah. But typically what we're seeing is uh, the school day being replicated online. So they're going into Zoom rooms. So they're seeing and hearing their fellow students in the room, but they're at that computer for a full school day. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot. Yep. So what, what is the result? The result is computer fatigue, it's burnout. And so, you know, some things parents can be doing is just making sure that when class is done, those kids have opportunities to get up and move, get outside, go for walks. Um, you know, a few things they can be doing during the classroom, very simple things. Um, make sure you're sitting up straight and your back is straight so you don't get fatigued. Um, making sure you're looking away from that computer screen now and then and looking outside. They, they say every 20 minutes you should look away from the screen to keep your eyes from becoming fatigued. Right. Uh, get up and move. You know, maybe you're doing class in your room for a first hour. Maybe second hour you move to the dining room or go out. If it's nice out, go sit out on the back porch, you know, get up and move. So those things are going to help a little bit with that fatigue. Yeah, now that's one thing that I've noticed uh, that you mentioned is that a lot of these places are trying to just replicate the uh, the in real life schedule. Like, well, yeah. uh, math is, math is from uh, you know eight fifteen to nine oh five, so therefore get on your computer at eight fifteen a.m. and we're all doing math, you know, for for forty five right. minutes. Um, uh, and that seems to be well, I don't know, like is their decision, but um, but at any rate. Um, 
Now, Homeschool Connections, which you are, I work for, and you're the co-founder, you guys yeah. have been doing online education for over a decade. I mean, correct me if I'm yeah. wrong, I think you were the, uh, I think you were pretty much the pioneer of homeschool education, uh, of, I'm sorry, of online education in the Catholic world. Um, so you've been doing it for over a decade. You have a lot of experience with this mode of instruction. And I, I know I know the schools aren't listening to our, our interview here, uh, but just um, but just in general, throw out what do you think in general? What are some key components to a successful online experience when you sit down with you know the the folks at HSC and you're saying how can we make this the most rewarding online experience? Yeah. What are some basic components? Well, you know, teaching online is a completely different dynamic from classroom teaching. You yeah. know. Um, someone who, and you know, you've taught in both. You've taught for us and you've also taught in the classroom. Um, an online teacher needs to be, first of all, comfortable with the camera. Yep. Not everyone is, is comfortable. I've interviewed so many teachers over the years who were dynamic, excellent teachers who end up not teaching for us because they were not comfortable mm-hmm. sitting in front of a camera. Um, and it's, it's quite a lot. There are very few people who are comfortable with that. It's hard to be witty, to be engaging, to show your joy and love of your subject matter, because that's really important, right? Uh, it's not enough to just teach children. They, they need, you, you got to get them to drink the water, not just take them to the water. Right. You know, uh, one, one of the reasons you're a good teacher, Philip, is your students can't help but see you love your subject matter and emotions are contagious and they catch that emotion. So you need to be able to transmit that emotion through a camera. You're not in, physically in a classroom with that student, you know, and the teacher needs to be skilled in visual presentation. Mm-hmm. Um, you're That's the king a... of, of PowerPoint, right? How many times have I sent a teacher to you, Philip, to say, teach him how to do PowerPoint? <laughs> because yes. it's a very visual way of learning. You know, they're looking at a screen and they need to be engaged. So, you know, simple PowerPoints that are going to help them retain information or recall you know, the information that they're learning in the classroom and, and using that classroom to its fullest extent, whether you're using Zoom or Adobe or whatever, it may mean um, using breakout rooms, right? Or, right. you know, how to engage in a Socratic discussion online. Um, those are all skills that can be learned. So hopefully, you know, one thing that, that schools learned <laughs> after being thrown into it last year, I hope they spent the summer just training their people um, in these skills so that they could be successful. One thing that I've often reflected on uh, as an online educator is that um, regarding what you said, being comfortable on camera and being engaging and transmitting that excitement to the students to make it contagious. If you think about a real life traditional classroom, right? Uh, I, I, (laughs) I physically have the students confined in a room, right? They can't go anywhere. (laughs) I have a captive audience. I'm physically in control of the room. I can see everything that's going on. Like I can see all 25 kids at once. I have the authority to to send them to the principal or the headmaster if they're doing. I can move their. I can make them switch seats. I can do whatever I want. I am like the dictator. Right. I have the monopoly of force in that classroom, and that's one thing to maintain control when you have that. But when I'm on the other side of a computer screen, I have none of that. I can't see right. what they're doing. I don't have control over the room, the physical environment. Uh, they could be they could be playing on their cell phone, and I wouldn't see it. You know, so. In online education, it is that much more important that the instructor be able to, by the sheer force of his or her personality and love of the subject matter, be able to keep those students engaged, or else it's it's simply, you know, centrifugal force of kids' attention is just going to throw them all over the place, right? Right. Well, and, and also, to that point, this shows why it's important for parents to be engaged in their children's education. Oh yeah. So, you know, we're a homeschooling company. We tell our parents, you still have to be actively engaged in your child's education. This is still homeschooling. So um, while you can't make sure that child's at the computer, the parents can. Um, And so that's one of the issues with what we're going through right now with the pandemic is if a parent has to work and a child's there home alone. So yeah, they need a teacher who can engage them and, and make, you know, not make them, but, fill them with the desire to come to the classroom because Mm -hmm. they want to learn um, to get them excited about the joy of discovery. Yeah. And you know, that's unfortunately, I don't know if I would say unfortunately, but that's what the teacher needs to do. Yeah. Yeah. Something like this can only be successful with the full participation of the parents in as much as that is possible. Right. 
Correct, um, definitely. So what about this, though? Uh, and, and I guess this applies to online education in general. Um, I'll be honest. When, <clears throat> when you first recruited me to work for HSC back in the golden days of your um, <laughs> 12 years ago. Yeah. Tw- oh, my God. Yep. It's been 12 years. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Um, <clears throat> I was I was a little skeptical of the merits of online education. Like, yep. I just thought that it was going to be inferior. Um, now, I should say it can be inferior, but just like an, just like a real life experience can be inferior, depending on. I mean, I, I sat through many college courses in a brick and mortar building where I was just drooling, being like, why am I here <laughs> because of the experience? But um, I guess, uh, you know, I would think like, well, I, you know, why would a kid want to look at a screen all day for educate? You know, like it seems so dull. Like, what do you say when people come to you and say, like, well, I don't want my kid looking at a screen for school? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm with you 100%. I agree. They should not. <laughs> and that's why, so homeschool, condi- homeschool Connections, again, we're there to support parents and their homeschooling, not the other way around. Right. Right. Um, we purposely only meet one to two hours a week per class. So younger kids less. Right. So they're not on the computer all day, every day. They're on the computer maybe two hours a day. Yeah. And the rest of the time, they're doing projects, they're reading, they're um, working with their mom or dad, they're getting outside, they're journaling, they're going for nature walks, they're doing things like that. Yeah. So. Yeah, my, my high school level history classes, we meet online for one hour a week, and then the rest of the coursework, they do it independently the rest of the time. So, right. yeah. And they need to connect with you, right? They need to connect with the teacher. The teacher's there. They can always email the teacher. Some teachers have Skype hours, et cetera. So yeah. it's, it's not like you only learn for an hour. Yeah. There's, right, the, a lot of times we flip education. Some teachers have the student watch a 20-minute lecture, and then when they come to class, it's entirely Socratic discussion. Yeah. So they're really engaged. So, you know, there's a lot of different ways that you can um, effectively learn online. Yeah. Now, one of the, uh, we were talking about earlier about missteps of going online, um, yeah. you know, monitoring a lot of the, I mean, with my, my own kids are in the, um, I homeschooled my kids for many years. They, they're in public school right now for a variety of reasons. Um, but one thing I've noticed watching all their teachers uh, accommodate to this, uh, um, uh, uh, something that, uh, I don't know if I'd call it a misstep, but um, and I think any parent out there is going to sympathize with this, the proliferation of making parents and students sign up for all these different apps and, and programs. Uh, like, I think, uh, you know, like you'll get a teacher and they'll say, like, okay, we're going to be using this app this semester, so I need you all to create an account with this app. And that, and the well, the teacher thinks it's only one app, but then every teacher does the same thing, and then you have multiple kids, and then before you know it, it's like okay, here's 21 accounts and apps. I need you to keep track of, <laughs> right? <laughs> and um, and one thing I've always loved um uh, about HSC, and I'm sorry, this isn't a homeschool connection commercial, but I'm just saying um, uh, every everything's very self-contained. We don't we don't sign people up and then tell them they have to download. 20 different apps to, to, to access everything. Um, and I, I, I wish that, uh, I wish that teachers would recognize, you know, what a, a frustration that can be at some point to keep track of all these apps yeah. and logins and whatnot. Well, and keep in mind too, right. We've been at this for 10, 12 years. Yeah. The teachers you're talking about are, are just doing the best they can and trying to find the best tools they can to make the most best of a situation. Um, one thing my husband uh, shared with me recently, you know, working in charter schools is that the online charter schools, their enrollments are way up as yep. much as 300% because they know how to do online education. So parents are feeling some of the same frustration you're feeling when their, their regular school goes virtual. Um, they don't have 10, 10 years of experience in that. So they're a lot more probably scrambling and saying, okay, here's a great app that's going to help. And, you know. Yeah. And, and yeah. to their, I mean, you know, most of these teachers are killing it. They're doing a, they're doing a great job in a hard situation. So, uh, you know, and, that, and everybody's kind of muddling through, it's just a complicated yeah. time. Um, yeah. but I guess, uh, like I said earlier, it's not like a lot of people, uh, a lot of districts are listening to this, taking notes right now, but <laughs> what, what advice would you give if you had, if you were in a, in a room and you had all the, the superintendents of various public private charter schools in here, and they were saying, Mrs. Whitman, convey upon us your extensive wisdom 
on how to <laughs> how to craft <laughs> on how can we craft a method of online oh. content delivery. Just what what advice would you give them if they asked your opinion? Well, a lot of what we've already said. Uh, train the teachers, teach them how to be engaging uh, online. You know, give them some media training, how to present. So, you know, one thing we train our teachers to do, we have summer training every year, is is how to use lighting, how to center themselves in the camera, how to move their hands. Um, so, you know, um, sound, making sure they have good sound, making sure they have good lighting, teaching them how to do PowerPoints and everything. And then also getting these kids off the computer as much as possible right. and working on individual projects. Um, maybe see if your school can go to a hybrid model. Some schools are meeting in person. Uh, some schools are doing part-time online. So kids are coming to school every other day. So that way only half of the kids are there at a time or a third. Um, so just really be open to some new and innovative things. Uh, one thing that we are seeing through this pandemic is people are becoming a lot more open to school choice and homeschooling. So yeah. the competition's there. Have you so seen superintendents? Uh, <laughs> better wake up. Have yeah. you seen a lot more interest in your program in particular uh, since the oh, pandemic? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah, we were just crazy busy this summer, and and. Um, I mean, phone calls were up like 400%. So just a lot of people just needing help and asking questions. Yeah. And so what we're seeing across the board at all the home study schools, all of the uh, homeschool providers, is they're all up typically 50 to 75%. That's what they're all reporting. Yeah. Um, and the estimate is 20 to 30% of those people will keep homeschooling once once the pandemic is over. Yeah. Um, I just saw a... Um, I just saw a percentage of them saying homeschooling has doubled wow. since the pandemic. And that's, that's homeschooling, not pandemic schooling, not um, right. online public schooling, but actually homeschooling wow. is, is, has doubled. It's gone from 5% to 10%. Wow. So a lot of what we're seeing at Homeschool Connections is a lot of parents who homeschooled with us three, four years ago and decide to put their kids in the school, they've come back. Also, we're seeing a lot of parents who are telling us, you know, I've wanted to homeschool for a long time. This gave them the and, impetus to. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So now, those people are going to stay. Now, Maureen, what would you tell, what kind of encouragement, would, I mean, if you could give just a word of encouragement to a parent who, that parent who says, like, I didn't choose this, uh, I have to do this yeah. now, I'm struggling, you know, maybe the schedule or just the format is, I mean, what, would, what kind of right. encouragement would you give to that parent? Well, you know, first and foremost, take it to prayer, take it before the Blessed Sacrament. I mean, that's always been my answer to everything. Go yeah. before the Blessed Sacrament. Just really pray over this. Get, you know, get Jesus as part of the decision and um, really ask for the Holy Spirit to guide you. And, and you know, if you need to find um, uh, psychiatric care or a counseling, do that. A lot of people are feeling a lot of undue stress and dealing with um, depression or dealing with anxiety because of, of this pandemic, seek mm -hmm. that help. Don't stop for a second. You know, no. seek spiritual advice from your pastor if you need to. Um, and, and ask your child, make sure that you are, you are having discussions with your child. Ask them, how are they feeling? What do they need? Um, how is the school serving them? Is it serving them well? You know, what is the school doing right? What can they improve? And just really be actively engage, be an active part of their education. I mean, one thing we're seeing is parents, I've gotten a lot of calls from parents saying, all right, I didn't realize my child was having all these issues in school until yeah. we started schooling at home because of the pandemic. And right. so now all of a sudden you have all these great parents who are like, okay, my child's having trouble reading. I didn't know that. And they're jumping in and, and, and doing what they need to, yeah. to make sure their child's getting the education they deserve. So, you know, just be open. Mm -hmm. Um, to your child and their needs and yeah. their dreams and, and what they want out of their education. That's great advice. Um, now uh, we got about we got about uh, two minutes left before we close. <laughs> why don't you why don't you tell us about the uh, the Catholic Homeschool Conference and where oh, people can right, get yeah. information about that? Just give us a rundown of what it is and. Uh, yeah. So if you're thinking about homeschooling, I actually have two great resources for you. One is is CatholicHomeschoolConference.com. Uh, there's a VIP. Oh, I, I forget what it is, like $97. But a lot of people have been reporting to me that they really love that. They listen to a different talk each day. So we have access to over 70 talks, lifetime access. And they're just really encouraging and helping. So if you, you want to get into homeschooling, that's a great start. Um, another great opportunity that is free is the Catholic Homeschool Community. So it's Catholic, 
homeschoolcommunity.com. Mm -hmm. It's free. It's a community of, um, oh gosh, a couple of thousand people who, so you can get answers, tips, ideas, whatever it, you it's need. Kind of like a, uh, it's kind of like a, a closed social media forum just for Catholic homeschoolers. Yes. Yeah, only better. You don't have to deal with all the junk that you see on Facebook. <laughs> <You're> right, <laughs> you right. You only see what you want to see. And um, just really great people there who want to do nothing more than to help you. I'm also available. If anyone has a question, I would love to help you. It doesn't have to be about Homeschool Connections. If you just have a question about homeschooling, go to homeschoolconnections.com, click on Contact, Maureen Whitman, um, drop me an email. I'm happy to help. Um, reach out to your local community, ask your pastor, um, you know, who are the homeschoolers in our, right. in, in our, in our parish. So, yeah, but the conference is awesome. We're doing a life after high school conference. Um, but that's it. You can pay that. You yeah. can pay the $97 and get access to all the recordings, right? Right. Um, right. So for the full year, so we do four conferences a year and um, it's all online. It's all virtual. Right. Terrific oh. resource. Okay. So to, to, for those of you who didn't catch that, uh, the resources, catholichomeschoolconference.com. Catholic, yep. Was it catholichomeschoolcommunity.com? Yep. And yep. homeschoolconnections.com. Maureen, thanks. It's always great chatting yeah. with you. Very glad Me you too. were with us again. And until next time, everyone, this has been Faith Matters with Philip Campbell. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you all.